let's go. What is good? We got the recap of the mock. That's what's good. We got everybody for a couple minutes afterwards, brought them in, chatted up, positive, negative. Some talked about their own team. Some talked about others. Some talked about kind of an overall summary. Some talked about strategy a little bit. Hey, shout out to um, Dave Wilsey because we didn't even, we were trying to get him out of there, but we ended up asking him two extra questions. I'm going to squeeze them into the recap oh. too. It's nothing to do with the draft. Just we were like, hey, you asked him an extra question. I was like, man, he's trying to get out of here. Let's get him another one. Uh, ah. I, had a, I had a great conversation with him among everybody else. So appreciate we appreciate everybody y'all. that joined us and gave us their time. We put them through the ringer for four rounds, and then we were like, hey, let's get some more from you. And, yeah. and, and now we're about to give it to you, the listener. Take, 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 so take. Make sure you hit that subscribe, yeah. like. Hit us with that five-star review if you're on the iTunes or the Spotify's. We appreciate y'all, and I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get it rolling. All right. Thanks for sticking around, uh, giving the, us a little bit more of your time. The godfather sure. of Dynasty Fantasy <laughs> Football, man. Can't can't sit. We were excited to have you on, man. Can't thank you enough for joining us for this, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Glad to be here. Glad to hang out with you guys for a while. So we've had we've had kind of everybody's come back on here and then just have their take whether it was a reach or some positive of a good pick or just an overall the floor is kind of yours couple minutes here what do you think what, what's your takeaways from from this draft here sure well you know we kind of talked about it uh previously when i when i made that 4.01 pick um unless it's it's something really egregious and I don't think we saw anything really egregious in this one uh, but unless there's just something really crazy it's hard to identify a pick in in this year's draft as a reach because um, just of the 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 huge tiers that we see starting as early as 1.02 um, the the lack of consensus so um, nothing stands out as as crazy to me really. Uh, it did certainly felt like there there were some teams chasing running backs a little earlier than than I might have, but sure. uh, you know that's okay. That's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Uh-uh. To push those push those uh, wide receivers down the board. Uh, you know, looking here, one thing that stands out to me is the the strength of the third round, and, and I kind of mentioned it earlier as well uh, that that I love that third round range. I took Brian Robinson, Wandell Robinson, and Jalen Tolbert went directly after me. Uh, you know, Jalen Tolbert could be a, a guy that's starting week one potentially for, sure. for for one of the best offenses in the league. So love that value. Um, Khalil Shakir, Jelani Woods in that third round range as well. Love it. Tyler Algier could be the the Falcons starting running back. Yeah. And he's a third rounder. Yeah. Uh, so j- just almost every player in that third round. I, I love the value on uh, on those guys and. You know, as far as other things that stand out, it's it's just hard to have this type of draft and and not talk about just how ugly the quarterback position is this year. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, Kenny Pickett up there in in that first round, uh, as as he is in most super flex rookie drafts. But. So you said you would slide him uh, back. Would you? Does that mean you're pretty much sliding those other two quarterbacks back as well? They went two four and two six. Uh, that's probably about where I would have them, honestly, in in that mid second round range. Uh, we could, so not we could move a couple in the second mid second. You like that? I like that. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. <laughs> he um, say he liked it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, again, this is we mentioned this with the Brian Robinson pick. This is the time where the NFL is is telling us the truth, right? Where, where thirty two teams are telling us what they think and. 32 teams passed on uh, on those guys twice, basically, mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. Uh, and in some cases, more than that. Um, so it it's almost, hard to be. Did it almost seem like a like like nobody wanted to be the one to do it? You know, was it oh, almost yeah. like it almost snowballed? Like once they all made it out of the first round and they were like, uh, let's just yeah, pass playing chicken, the right? Too, playing you know? chicken. Like, yeah. I don't want to be the unpopular guy. All the cool kids are passing. You know, what, do you think that was the case or you think they're really just not that great? It really did feel that way. Feel like that because once we um, and you know I, I can't even remember who the first one drafted was in the third round. I, I guess it was Willis. Maybe uh, I, can't I think remember. Ritter went second. Ritter, yeah. Ritter, yeah. Ritter okay, was so, the second QB off the board. Yeah. Yeah. So once Ritter went, then we saw Arizona traded up, and um, I'm sorry, not Arizona, Tennessee, Tennessee traded up, yeah. and, um, and and um, Carolina, Carolina. Thank you. Yeah, Carolina traded up. So. 
once Ritter went off the board, like, it's okay once, now. We can take yeah. now. We can take him. Okay, ever someone else did it. Now I can do it. Right. Yeah. The seal was broken, and, right. and uh, some other teams started getting aggressive there. So Great point. I mean, the the landing spot uh, for really all of those guys is on their side, right? They all landed in in places that uh, they could have the opportunity to play as early sure. as this year, and 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 certainly uh, if not this year, then next year. But the, you know, the draft capital is just so scary, right. uh, and and then when you take into account next year's class, which already right. looks pretty strong, in- investing in those guys, I mean, it's going to be a Davis Mills situation, right? right. And I mean, right. Davis Mills played really well, uh, and in Dynasty, we still don't know exactly what to do with him, uh, even though Houston didn't didn't really make a significant move at quarterback. He's, he's still not valued much higher than he was a year ago, uh, despite some pretty strong play. No, I've been I've been kind of well, trying to scoop him up for as cheap as I can, just yeah. in case. I mean, I, I don't I don't hate the Davis Mills stab. Do Do you think that that maybe this, this is something that we'll see a little more in the NFL? It seemed like for so long it took him a while to get off the running backs out of the first round. For so yeah. long it was like, hey, we need a quarterback. We're just going to jam it in here and take these quarterbacks. Do you think? Maybe this is something that we'll see in the future is, hey, we don't we don't love these guys, so we're just going to kind of let it go. Uh, you know, I, I hope it is. I, I hope it is because you, you would think that um, that NFL teams are, are becoming better, becoming smarter uh, with the way they uh, evaluate incoming prospects. And we've seen those quarterbacks with it almost felt like they were not going to succeed. You know, I mean, you hate to say it at this point, but uh the Dwayne Haskins pick just felt so uh, it, it felt like a, a, a reach even when, yeah. when it was made uh, years ago. A lot of them feel yeah. forced. Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, Mitch, you know? So. Yeah. So um, I, even though it was such a shock and it, it certainly shook up um, super flex leagues and super flex rookie drafts, I was kind of happy to see it uh, the, the way it played out just, uh, just kind of getting back to an even playing field. And we're not necessarily going to reach for these quarterbacks, despite how valuable they are in our league. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I liked it too. And I, I, I actually, after, after the whole thing ended, I said, my big takeaway was, you know, commending the, the owners yeah. and, and GMs and uh, everybody scouting to, to not just be like, Hey, we need a quarterback. Let's, we got to take this guy. We need to take him. We need to just like, Hey, let's pump the brakes here. And, We'll we'll take best player available, whoever fits what we're doing, and and we'll we'll address that situation down the line here. Just because we need it doesn't mean we need to waste a pick doing so. Uh, so I kind of like it. Any any final thoughts here? Um, I just just another thank you for for yeah. running this and for having me on. Uh, it was it was a good time, and you know, again, always good to. Uh, meet new folks in the industry and to to get some good mock draft practice against some of the best. Yeah, so we we again we really appreciate you. No, thank you, you Ryan. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a <laughs> it was a pleasure. This whole experience has been really fun. It's been super interesting to see everybody's different takes, opinions, styles. Um, and then you know somebody gets on here. Kane is he's taking Kenny Pickett and he's telling you why you got to take Kenny Pickett. And then a lot of other guys are getting on here saying, yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking Kenny Pickett. And (laughs) so I'm excited for this to come out and, and see, you know, kind of how it all comes together and and what the finished product looks like. So thank you, man. Thanks. Thanks again. Really appreciate your time, Ryan. Anytime guys. Thanks. All right. So we wrapped up the draft with, with Troy King here. We're back. Um, We've given everybody the opportunity, anything you liked or didn't like, reach or, or positivity. You know, you're allowed to skew positive these days. I know no, nobody <laughs> likes to do it, but I mean, uh, so you do it. You take it wherever you want to go. Uh, floor is yours. Sure. Uh, I feel like I have a lot to say about a lot of picks. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe good and bad, okay. but um, let's talk about. So I was a little surprised where Zamir White went, right? Yeah. And, I, and I like Zamir White as a prospect in terms of just how he looked in college, but there's some things that we need to factor in, right? He had injury problems in college. Mm -hmm. So that's one factor. Also, he goes to an offense with Josh Jacob is clearly going the RB one, right? And he's still young. He's believe Josh Jacobs only 24 years old, right? Mm -hmm. So Samir White might work in there, but I feel like there are other running backs that like Damian Pierce, right? I would take Damian Pierce over Zamir White just because of 
you know, he would draft in the fourth round. His competition at Dregs Burkhead and Marlon Mack. Like, right. I, I don't see me taking Zamir White over David Pierce, unless you think that the Raiders are eventually going to move on for Josh Jacobs and you believe that Zamir is going to stay healthy and going to take over the offense, then that's the only reason I see that pick happening. But I also prefer someone like Isaiah Spiller. You know, I, yes, he's behind Eckler. Austin Eckler, but he should have a role and they've been looking for that other running sure. back to compliment with Josh Kelly. And yeah, again, they've been failing, right? right? right, right. Justin Jackson, right? So hopefully Isaiah Spiller, and again, he was a good prospect too, but hopefully he can come in and have a consistent role in that offense. But, and also there's just other guys like, and I'm not just going to pick on, you know, Samir White, but people who I feel like, like Matt Hicks, he got, um, John Mechie super late. Right. Like, I love John Mechie. Mm-hmm. And I think the only reason why John Mechie is going this late in the draft is he was a, he had second round draft capital. You know why he had second round draft capital? Because he's freaking good. <laughs> good prospect. And, yeah. <laughs> he's a good prospect. But people are like, like no, I don't think they're forgetting about him because he's hurt. It's they didn't see him in, the, in those national spotlight games exactly. when they could have. Exactly. And this is what's driving out his price. So like I've been trying to scoop up. I have too much Mechie. Like I have Mechie's probably one of my most rostered rookies because I keep targeting it, right? I, love I, would, it. I, I would take him I would take him mid second. Like yeah. I'll take him mid second. Like I feel like that's like where he should be going, just because and it also with Houston, right? You have Brandon Cooks, who's older, but there's Nico Collins. We have no idea what Nico Collins is, right. but this, John Mechie could easily take over Me- Nico Collins. I like Collins, Nico right? Collins just fine, but I mean, Mechie just offers something different. You know, that, that's, that's exactly. a chain mover. He can do the dirty work. It felt like it was about his time to get his shine in Alabama. Mm-hmm. And then Jamison Williams just happened to come in and blow the doors off of this thing in one year. Uh, yeah. uh, but, you know, <laughs> Mechie was hanging around there in, when Devonta Smith and, and Waddle were around and they were like, hey, there's this guy Mechie here and he's still doing his thing. And this year he really did do a lot of the dirty work for, for Alabama, a bunch of catches and then just unfortunately got hurt at the wrong time. But I, I agree with you, man. I, I, I got Mechie at least in the you know middle half of the uh, second round as well. Exactly. And then you got other guys like you just need to factor in, right? So like Alec Pierce. There's guys like Alec Pierce, and I'll even throw in Taquan Thornton, right? Guys who drafted way higher than anyone, at least in Twitter world, was expecting them to, right? That draft mm-hmm. capital was crazy. And you can't ignore that. And also they go into – situations where they could have a role right like alex pierce like there's no wide receiver too exactly you have michael pittman and And nobody paris hopefully hopefully. i mean i've been drafting paris late in drafts for years now hopefully it's gonna happen but i mean you can't bank on that exactly so you brought him in for a reason again he could help stretch the field so alex pierce at late second i see him going into the third plenty of times he's someone you should target taquan thornton he's Everyone makes fun of Tyquan Thornton pick for the Patriots, and I made fun of it. But you know what? There's a reason, and everyone's going to compare him to Nikhil Harry. And listen, I was surprised by the pick, but you know what? They drafted him for a reason, and I expect him to get work early on. The offense isn't very sexy for wide receivers, but you have Jacoby Myers, who's like, he's a fine wide receiver. He's over exceeded expectations, but let's see, nobody's scared of Jacoby Myers. And right. you got Kendrick Bourne, who's using a couple different ways. I know you got Devontae Parker, who's an older asset, but attack on Thornton to show any kind of juice, and we know that he's quick, he could contribute to this offense. So that's somebody, look, it's easy to make fun of him, but with his draft capital going in the late third, like, I'll take that all day. Yeah, <laughs> you know he's what I'm saying? forgotten for sure right now. Like, there's some drafts where he doesn't go to late four. Exactly, because people just don't like it or don't like right. Mac Jones. And then other guys, like I like Lay, like I like Kyle Phillips, you know. Like me too. He, that's a must. That's an auto pick as soon as we're in the fourth round for me. And it also, like, I've been able to scoop him off waivers, like, plenty of yeah. times because I think it's because of his draft capital. But, like, he could, it's very possible he could take that slot role. Like, he could be the slot. Yeah. He's just, if you believe Not in a lot the of talent. Competition. Exactly. So, Good I'm like, returner. There we go. So, like, there's different ways you can use him. And then there's other guys where I'm very curious about Algier. Algier is probably going to be one of the biggest wild cards to me of this, like, rookie draft because he can go in and he could be, like, 
Quadrill Allison and be absolutely <laughs> irrelevant, useless. Yeah. useless, or he could be the starter and just has to compete with Damian Williams, who's 30 years old and like, yeah, and, you know, again, and, and, and Cordero, who they've kind of said, maybe we might not quite use him how we used him last year again. But. Exactly. So I'm like, he has an, yeah. an opportunity. So, and then, but yeah, I mean, I could probably give analysis on all these draft right. picks, <laughs> right. but like, I'll, I'll, I'll probably, I'll, I'll just bring one more up. Okay. Uh, I'll say there, there's somebody I want to talk about. Okay. And I always roast this dude. Cons- <sighs> I roast this dude so much, but <laughs> Bellis Jones. Bellis Jones. All right. Oh, my gosh. Like, again, they did absolutely nothing for Justin Fields. What the Bears provide Justin Fields, it's mind-boggling how, like, little they did with all the – and they took him over, like, I think – Fellas Jones went over Sky Moore, I think George Pickens, if I'm not mistaken, or around that range. Like, I don't, I just want to know, like, out of all the receivers there, again, like, and he's an older rookie. So, but the thing about, so yeah, I'm roasting Village Jones, but the okay. thing about him, though, is that he has an opportunity, right? They spend the draft capital on him. They have, look at everyone around besides Darnell Mooney, they have Byron Pringle. Equinamia St. Right, Brown. Right. Like, you know, I think a bird. Like, they have, like, absolute scrubs. Yeah. Absolute, the scrubbiest of the scrubs. So, Valens Jones could, he should be the wide receiver, too. There's a good chance he could come in and be the wide receiver, too, in that right. offense. So, it's like, in the fourth round, it sounds gross, but it's a freaking steal. Like, if you can get somebody who can compete for the number two position in the offense in the fourth, right. no matter how, what you think about him, like, you kind of have to ignore your priors and look at the situation for what it is <laughs> right. and take him there. So it, it kind of feels gross and everyone, nobody likes him because he's older, but I, I agree, man, if he's hanging around in the fourth, why not just stab at it and see what happens? I mean, exactly. It's like at that point, like you in the fourth round, if you see anyone with even a little drive capital, you want to scoop them up. Yeah. Right? It's yeah, just like, yeah. you're like, please, like there's a chance at that drive capital again, drive capital, not everything, but it's a good yeah. indicator that they're going to bring you on the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah what I miss? Not much. I'm gonna let <laughs> I'm gonna let Troy get out of here. Um, but I got one more question that we've asked sure. everyone before you leave. All right. Of course. Um, where w- what would be the player on the board, or where's the start of the players on the board that you would trade a random 23 first for? So is it like the one through five, and then after that you would give up a, a random 23 first for, or like would you'd rather you'd rather trade this year's pick to get a random yeah. 23 first next year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say I'm looking towards the back half of the first, like. Uh, Probably 111, 112 okay. Okay. is when I would do that. Cause like, respect. Because here's the thing. Yeah, like, everybody's I know, ready to sell all these picks for a random 23 first. I'm I know. And, and here's the thing. I, and I know like, the 2023 class I know is awesome and great. But I'm like, here's the thing. Like, for example, I see JMO at 1-8, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm not going to just sell that. If I could get JMO, I, he's not always going at 1 8, but like right. that's freaking value there. You like, traded a random 23 first for JMO at 1 8, <laughs> baby. I love to hear that. Exactly. So, like, exactly. So, what I'm saying, like, that's to me, that's a freaking still an Olave, like at 110. Like, yeah, 23 first, there's some better prospects, but I'm like, he's in a good situation. And like, James Cook, either James Cook is going to be a, a again, he's going to either crush it or he's going to be just a third, you know, third down pass catcher, right? right. We have no idea. Right. But again, I, to me, I feel like late first, I would just sell random. But like, again, there's guys like Sky Moore could, he's a good prospect. He's in a great situation. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to put some respect on these players. I know it's easy to hate on them, but uh, uh, like that, next year's well, class is always the best. And I know 23 has been touted for a while. And and what if some of them guys in the 23 class right. pull a Chris Olave and or don't come out, Travis you know, and, yeah. and yeah. stay another year, you know, they could, they could easily do that. We have absolutely no idea. We just always assume they're going to declare early and it doesn't always turn out like that. Shit, you see Bryce Young's making more money than Jalen hurts. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, I'm going to stay another year and catch this money real quick. Ex- exactly. Like, of course, like those, those, College is awesome. see, those deals. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Exactly. And the rules have changed, man. Yeah. Again, it's more than About it's, time. And it took a long enough, but Jesus. Hey, now college players are getting what they deserve. Right. So. 
All right, Troy. I Get really him out of here. He's got bedtime. That's why I couldn't join, man. I had I had to go nah. through the bedtime regime. Really Listen, appreciate man. you trying to stick to the schedule here. So, no, Thanks of course, so guys. Well, thank you so much for inviting me again. We'll be talking, guys. Have a good one. This was fun. All right, man. Peace appreciate it. All right, so we're back with John. He was picking out of the three hole, uh, just getting everybody's opinion at the end of this. You can go positive, you can go negative, whatever you want to do. Anything, any thoughts on the draft as we as we wrap up here? Coming out of the three spot, I stayed true to what I did in actual drafts. Some of my most rostered players are David Bell, are J- you know Jalen Tolbert. And I went with the profiles that I really like, especially at receiver, because once you get out of Brees Hall, we've, we've talked about Kenneth Walker. I, I, I don't like any of those profiles. I was hoping Drake London would have slipped to three. That didn't happen. Troy King, that son of a bitch. He, he, <laughs> he took him from me. Um, so I got to give Troy some hell there. But I, Or some props for taking the right pick. No, no, I'll text him after this and yell at him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I went with the profiles that I like at receiver. And if it's another draft where I have multiple seconds, multiple thirds, I do like to take shots on some running backs too. And one of my most rostered running backs that I have in rookie draft so far, Jerome Ford, who ended up going late in the fourth round, didn't line up with me here, but uh, that that's one player that I've been leaving drafts with that I didn't get to mention here tonight, what, but overall, what's the yeah, rationale there? Uh, Kareem hunt, potentially, we, we hear the rumors constantly. Who knows if he's there even going into 22. So now you have Dearness Johnson. We don't know what's happening with him after 2022. Jerome Ford, I keep saying, if there is an Elijah Mitchell, and I, the best comp there is just looking at the speed score. Mm-hmm. Jerome Ford, he, he can fast. bolt. He, yeah. is, he is fast. So him with Nick Chubb, uh, Obviously, it's not ideal being behind Nick Chubb, but if anything were to happen, I, I just think Jerome Ford could make the most of his opportunity. Again, we're, we're using late sure, fourth round sure, draft sure. capital. Uh, but yeah, that, that's just one of the guys. And then I mentioned Charlie Kohler, who's been a tight end that I've been picking up in tight end premium leagues late in drafts. But my, my three receivers, Burks, Bell, told what I feel good about it. Uh, Bell and Tolbert, probably not huge difference makers, but guys that I, I think can contribute here for fantasy teams, at least uh, as maybe as the season progresses and definitely in 2023. All right, man. Really appreciate everything. And uh, we'll be we'll be looking forward to chatting with you uh, when you're when you're back into the world and, and we're, uh, we're ready to uh, chop it up with you because we 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 really enjoy you. So. Awesome. Shout out to John Bauer and the Dynasty Theory. Make sure you're checking that out. All right. Well, we finished the draft. We're kind of getting a little recap, a little little last last thoughts, last uh, input from from all of our esteemed guests. Appreciate you, Michael Bauer, for joining us. Of um, who, what what was your uh, what would you say was the biggest reach of this draft? Your least favorite pick. So I understand that he got some good draft capital, but I'm not a Tyron Davis Price fan at all. Um, he actually was my lowest graded running back out of the entire class. He's just kind of big, but not super powerful, a little lumbering, dances around behind the line too much. You know, you would think a guy that went to LSU was highly recruited would just be an absolute banger. I think they were hoping for another Leonard Fournette. He just didn't get it. At the 2-9, just looking at what went behind him, I would have went in another direction. Uh, Trey McBride was the next pick. And in a uh, tight end premium, I would have been happy to make that at the 2-9 instead. Um, but I'm also just like a big Tyron Davis Price hater, I guess. Um, and if you follow me on Twitter, I'm also a Jalen Hurts hater. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> he's the guy I don't like. And it's just because I don't like uh, Eagles fans don't like any of their players. That's Philadelphia like, sports in general. We, it's just what we do. Yeah, like, man, you know, I, I don't listen to much Jim Rome, but he was crucifying the Philly fan. For basically back when the with the Sixers, which which they were playing, man, I forget the first series they were in, uh, and and they won that series in Game Six, and the players were talking about how they were afraid to have to go back to Philly for Game Seven because the fans were going to be so miserable if they lost. Which then the next series they ended up losing at home, and the fan, yeah. man, fans are brutal over there in Philadelphia. We we are. <laughs> it's like our thing. I don't I don't know. Which the is city funny. of brotherly hate. You know, it's funny that Casey grew up not far from me, but he's a 49ers fan somehow. Yeah, he can't be. Yeah, he. 
I, I, I've heard that story several times. I've always, I'm for some reason, tune out, but uh, I'm not exactly sure why. I think, I don't know why, but he definitely does not like the Eagles or their fans, which is unfortunate because his wife is a huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. But anyway, I'm so not surprised to hear you don't like Jalen Hurts. Well, it's why just, would you like any of your players? Well, here's the thing. It's not that I don't like him as, as a person and as a leader. I think he's fantastic. But the deficiencies that he should not be having, he still does. Locks on to his first read, doesn't set his feet well, doesn't throw with the anticipation, doesn't drive the ball. You, dude, you went to Alabama and Oklahoma. Fix your shit. You know what I mean? Like, seriously. Things you are to- looking up, though. I mean, we'll see. They're looking here's, up. They got A.J. Your- Brown in the building. Devonta Smith's a stud. Here's another problem. I want to say it on Twitter so bad, but I will get fucking roasted. You give Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Miles Sanders, Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard. You gave Carson Wentz a broken down Zach Ertz. Bryce Treggs, Deontay Burnett, the ghost of all Sean Jeffrey. Like, dude, come on. You know what I mean? Like, if you hate Carson Wentz, just tell him to go fuck himself. Don't don't try to run his ass out of town. But that's neither here nor there. It's whatever. He's gone. Jalen's here. I have to deal with it until yeah. I don't. He might be there to stay, too. I hate to say it. I don't know. We'll see. This would be a make or break year. Like, they, they set him up for success. So, it's... it's like I, like I tell my buddies, if he proves me wrong, then I'm happy. Right. Right? Like, then yeah. then my team is a good quarterback, and you prove me wrong, and I'm okay with that. So, and I am actually a pretty rational Eagles fan, to be honest with you, for the most part. You hate them all. Don't lie. No. You can't I, wait to boo. The boo birds. I actually don't boo that much because I got a three year old, so I try to like keep it tame when I watch the game. I'm like, that's a good example. I'm trying. I'm really fucking trying, but it's hard. <laughs> Who's your favorite pick of this draft? So my favorite pick of the draft, I love Garrett's pick of Khalil Shakir at the three five, right after me taking Greg Dulcich. So a lot of people are kind of worried about Khalil Shakir. I'm coming around on him more. I was kind of a Khalil Shakir hater, but Um, He went to a good spot in Buffalo. Emmanuel Sanders left. Jameson Crowder's on a one-year deal. So there's a reality where next year it's Stephon Diggs, it is Gabe Davis, and Khalil Shakir in the slot. And I like that a lot. In the third round, I mean, right before Jordan Woods. You might not even have to wait until next year because as much as we love Crowder, he can't stay healthy, you know? So great pick by the Bills. Uh, he's an exciting guy, and and you know, good swing there in the third round. I, I got to agree. Yeah, I like it. Also, the guy I was talking about before, Daniel Bellinger at the four twelve. It's there's a really good possibility that Bellinger is relevant in the next couple of years. Man, I don't know the Giants. They got problems. Quarterback is one of them. So we'll see. But Bellinger is pretty good. Good on screens. Good in the open field. You don't have to line him up as a traditional tight end. He can kind of move around a little bit. So um, as a fourth-round rookie draft pick, dump him on your taxi. Let him simmer down there for a couple years till he has that third-year breakout. See what happens. All right. Well, appreciate you coming on and yucking it up with us. Uh, make sure you go follow uh, Michael Bauer on Twitter at Dynasty Rewind and Rewind CEO. Appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. We got Garrett Price back here of the Dynasty Nerds. You can find him on Twitter at Dynasty Price. Uh, we've been kind of doing this with everybody afterwards. You know, you kind of floor is yours. Take it wherever you want to go. If you want to talk about your strategy or somebody else's strategy or pick a you reach really like or someone a positive else made or, yeah. or a worse pick, you know, whatever you want to do, man. Floor is yours for a minute here. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be getting a, a lot of hate. We already talked about it. There's a mere white pick, and uh, and I understand why. Uh, but but sometimes you got to get your boys, and especially once you get to the midpoint of the second round, they're all it's all a crapshoot. Uh, so I, I like to look for upside, and I think that Zamir has some of the highest upside uh, in this class overall. Uh, I was happy that Kenneth Walker fell as far as he did. Uh, I thought that ended up being. Uh, a, a really good value there. Uh, James Cook and Tyrion Price both went a little bit higher than I thought they would go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know people are really high on James Cook. It, for me, it kind of goes back to his tape. I don't want to overvalue a player just because of the landing spot and the draft capital. Jeans. And I think he's yeah, yeah, and, yeah, you, and the Dalvin did you Cook. You know, jeans. his brother was Dalvin Cook. I don't know if you knew that. What? Yeah. What? 
Doesn't breaking make news. We had a breaking news sounder. Got to reevaluate everything. <laughs> All right, start it over. Start it over. Let me. Uh, yeah. So he he went a little high uh, for for my taste personally. Agree. Uh, but but overall, I, I mean, I think this I think this draft is pretty fair. Uh, Ritter and Willis, I'm fine with them in the second round. Once again, I, I mentioned upside. Those two guys have crazy upside. Could that blow up in your face and neither one of them ever see the field? Sure, absolutely. That can always happen with third round picks. But I think both of those guys have a pick. shot. Yeah, it can happen well, with a first round pick. Well, absolutely. They'll, they'll see the field probably, but yeah, yeah. But it could still blow up in your face. Fifty percent shot Dude, it does. You gotta roast somebody. People eviscerated you. Just give it to <laughs> They eviscerated me. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Man. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're a nice so guy. So nervous to watch this You're now. <laughs> No, well, no, everybody, nobody so was scared. really, nobody was that uh, fired up. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't have any, I didn't have any big issues. Yeah, yeah. like I said, James Cook and Terry and Davis Price were probably the two ones that were a little bit high for me. Uh, I like Tyler Algier falling to the to three seven. I think that's a pretty good value there. Yeah, just because he could be the day one starter. Sure, uh, it's it's a it's a real possibility. So, uh, I think that's interesting. Uh, I'm David Bell at two three. I'm not the biggest David Bell guy, like based on his tape. Mm-hmm. I was underwhelmed, but I get the opportunity and situation there with Deshaun Watson. So, if you want it, like I, I tend to base my drafts more on my big board more than anything else. Sure. So it, that would be high for me, but I, I yeah. get it. Well, I'll tell, um, I'll tell, I'll tell Bauer. He's he would have put. He said he would have pushed Bell. He could push Bell up into the first round. So take that. Oof. Bell sucks as far. Yeah, that's as- way too high. <laughs> That was way too high. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, overall, I mean, I think it's a pretty fair, I think it's a pretty fair mock. Uh, Alec Pierce at 212 is a good value. Mm-hmm. Big um, time, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't really hate, I don't really hate any of the, the picks really. It's, it's, it's pretty fair. And, and I'm a nice guy, so I don't yeah. have to be too mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, man. Well, we'll get you out of here. We really appreciate all the time and effort you gave us here. Yeah, um, man. We'll be putting this thing together and getting it out as soon as we can. So, Looking forward to the end product and, and sharing it with you guys. Thanks again, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. The draft has ended. We're back here with Angelo at Angelo underscore fantasy or AngeloAnalysis.com. Make sure you check all that out. Uh, we've just been kind of asking everybody after we're done. Picks maybe you liked, maybe you didn't like, reaches or just overall just what you thought of what was going on. Any Anywhere you want to take it, the floor is yours. And uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, first, thanks for having me. I appreciate you guys inviting me to the lock, man. It was actually a lot of fun. Uh, and it really, this stuff really helps me when I when I do my rookie drafts because there's a lot of great minds in here. Um, and kind of seeing what they're thinking, where they're selecting is a huge help to me, and I'm I'm sure everyone watching too. So thank you, um, man. I think the the one that sticks out to me is David Bell at two three. I love it because I have David Bell over Pickens, White. Like Watson, Dotson, Alave, because I think he has a better he has a better chance of where he's drafted being safer. Like I'm okay with if you know if I'm on the clock at 110, let's say, or 109, and Chris Alave staring me in the face, I have a chance to trade back to maybe you know 112, 111. I'll take David Bell plus. Right. Right. Because I think David Bell is going to be safe. That's important to me when I'm looking at my, the first rounds of my drafts. I want to pick up capital and I want to be secure with the capital I do get. So if I can pick a guy like David Bell, who I'm really high on and analytically scored really well for me, I understand that this is a guy who has potentially high hit rate and has a pretty safe floor in the NFL and could provide my team with pretty good security going forward of their receiver position. Maybe he's not like an every year wide receiver two, but I think drafting a wide receiver three, a pretty safe one at that, in my opinion, at the end of that, the back half of that round, plus maybe picking up an additional second next year or whatever that looks like a third. I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that's been a common theme was what, you know, kind of once you get in that one, nine, one, 10, can I trade back and get two shots at two, one, two, three, Two one two four. Definitely kinda... get that two next year. Don't settle for a third. If they're if you're gonna move back off of Olave yeah. or some one of those higher guys like hey, Watson, two next year is gonna be for Watson or or Olave. Yeah, a two next year is gonna be. You're gonna get like 
premium like guys like Jaheim Bell, like you know, you you're gonna get some studs in the, in the seconds next year. So uh, I'm excited for a chain. I think will be a guy too. Yeah. Um, you can get in the second round. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's gonna be a next year's gonna be a really fun class. I'm just starting to dive into it and evaluate it. So uh, comparing that this class is interesting because I think it that the talent is a, a little bit higher end in my opinion. Right. Like I think Quentin Johnson would be the wide receiver one in this class, um, and he's probably gonna wide, probably gonna go with wide receiver between two and three, two three four in next year's class. Yeah, uh, behind JSN, um, JSN Boutte and uh, maybe Addison, but you know it, it is a really damn good class next year. So I'm I'm excited for the backs too. Gibbs is the one that um, I've had my eye on for a few years because you know his skill set as a runner receiver. I mean, uh, just a really intriguing player. So. But we yeah, need no. that. We need to get Fan- Angelo back on for that early twenty three look class. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We'll be we'll be talking to you about that. We so you get, you're getting a little getting the Devi in there. I love so you know just hey just pencil me in right now. Yeah, I got, we got you. you. We'll punch you in for two at least. So yeah. uh, that sounds good. I got a follow up question along those lines. Sure. Right? So yeah, no I, problem. I, I didn't ask it when we were when you were on the clock at one six uh, uh-huh. when you took Sky Moore. So given the twenty three class, the talent. Would you trade that one six pick, give away the chance at Sky Moore for a random twenty three first? <sighs> random twenty three first. You don't know. So he, you think the team might be? You know, it's yeah. hard. I hate trying to predict. This what is a tough pick one. It's gonna I like be, it though. You know. So, yeah. So my thought process is usually so like if I'm drafting a like so, you know, I'm drafting a player in the Pro Bowl tier on AGS. Mm-hmm. There's only really one tier higher than that that's realistic. It's the all pro tier. And then after that, you get Hall of Famer. So you don't fucking pass on Hall of Famers. Right. Right. So it's like Jonathan Taylor guys. Like you don't pass on those. Yeah. Those are rare. But you have to draft really 1 1 or 1 2 to get Hall of Fame level talents. Like last year, there was one of them, and that was Kyle Pitts. You know, the year bef- two years before or a year before was Jonathan Taylor. Right. Next year, probably Bajan Robinson. Maybe. Right. He's a pretty, like, I mean, Ladanian Tomlinson esque talent. Like the guy's good. Besides that, I mean, we're going to have some all-pro talent, some Pro Bowl talent. There's not the biggest discrepancy between those two. So I would probably take Sky Moore. All right. Like if you're talking about if, if I have a better chance of getting a back end of the first round or next year or Sky Moore, I'll take Sky Moore. Um, what about Jameson but, Williams? Oh, I'll take the I'll take the next year's pick. That must sure. be a drop-off there between uh, – Yeah, I'm not going to – because. Three Jamison Williams is in the next tier, which is you know you're you're potentially above average pass catchers, which are good players, right? right? But those aren't guys I think can help me with my league. A little more uncertainty year. for those guys for you. Yeah, and I don't want uncertainty where where we're drafting yeah. is like if I'm at one six, I don't want uncertainty. I want I want the guy I am sure is going to produce or the most sure I can be. Yeah. Um. So I would take. You know, I'm, I'm sure, more sure about Sky Moore, so I'm okay with taking him instead of the 2023 pick. But with a guy like Jamison Williams, I'll take my chance in 2023 pick because, you know, I think it's going to be four deep at receiver at least. Um, with guys, a guy like Josh Downs will probably go in the back half of the first round too um, in the NFL draft, so he'll have good capital. You know, the running backs are probably three, four deep. So we're looking at 108 plus the two quarterbacks. So that's 110 right there. So my chances of getting a, a player in the Pro Bowl the Pro Bowl tier better is pretty good, in my opinion, for yeah. next year's class. Just looking at what it could be. Um, obviously, I don't know if the, the numbers sure, analytically sure. because this class isn't shaped well, we'll out We'll bring yet, this up next year yeah. and just see. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think, you know, a guy like Williams is a little riskier, so I I'd, would I'd much rather probably take that 2023. Fair. All right, man. Well, again, really appreciate your time. You're always one of our favorites. We'll we'll definitely get you on to talk about some of these guys as we get a little further down the line. Maybe we'll see you again this summer. But appreciate all that you do, and and be sure that you check out everything that Angelo has to offer because it's he's one of the best going. So we, we we really appreciate you. I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you guys again for having me on. Thank you. All right, Kane. So the drafts wrapped up. We're we're on to you know Cincinnati. Um, who was? <laughs> Who was who was your least favorite or or, or a big reach or, or maybe if you have a, a like a, a spot that you don't like or any of those kind of things? Again, De- Debbie Kane on the Twitters. Make sure you go follow him. Uh, Debbie Marketplace Podcast. Appreciate you coming on back to just for the listeners so we know who we're talking to. Back to the question. Yeah. So, like, I know you drafted right behind me. 
but I do not like Isaiah Spiller going to the ch- going to the Chargers. See, and that's the only pick that I dislike that you made. I would have rather had a, a Spiller over over Damian Pierce, I think. But I'm curious to to know why uh, why you dislike uh, Spiller so much. Well, well, where did you have Spiller pre draft? Uh, he's my running back four. Okay, that's not bad. No, like I, I like I think Spiller's fine, but you don't like I the think, landing spot or you don't like the capital or what is it? I don't like the landing spot at all. OK, like I don't like necessarily like that. He went in the fourth round either. Um, sure. But like which is why he's know. not one six or one eight, which is why he's two eight. Oh, yeah. No. And I'm I'm 100 percent with you. I think the the issue that I have, right, is we're hoping that he's the running back too. Mm-hmm. And I just think that there's some other players that already are the running back too on their team. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I feel like you're accepting more inherent risk with Spiller over some of the guys that are taken after him. And like, that's the only problem that I have with it, um, especially when you're behind such a good running back in Austin right. Eckler too. So I, I think that right. that's like the, the big thing for me. They do have a banger in Austin Eckler, uh, but he he's not the – Youngest, freshest, healthiest back that's ever come across, right? He's, yeah. He misses time, so, and so, he's on a super cheap right. deal right now. He's got so that like, do less than five million each of these next two years. It's probably even less than that. Uh, he's got three million dead in twenty two, one point five million dead in twenty three. They're not paying him very much. He got a cheap deal because Melvin Gordon held out. He should actually hold out for more money. We've been right. making that kind of so, argument. So that would be part of my when I picked him and, and made that pick. Like, you know, I like Mechie, which I don't know if you like Mechie or not. And I like Trey McBride in a, in a tight end premium uh, situation, especially late second round of, of a possible guy who could see a lot of volume. And Alec uh, Pierce, eventually. You know, I, I can see and Alex, P- Alec, Alec over. Pierce, sure. Uh, but it is. It's it's Eckler. Like Eckler should hold out. Like they should pay him more money. This is his last chance to get a contract. Like he should hold out a little bit. And like, I mean, I like Justin uh Jackson as and I well, I don't really like I think Josh Kelly's I think Spiller's inherently better than him um, and so I I, I think I, stay healthy either, I think he know? comes right in and takes that it takes that two spot because I I believe in the talent of Spiller plus I think he's a plus receiver plus Eckler's not the healthiest guy plus if you can keep Eckler healthy when you're getting to that playoff run I think you by could using you know Spiller by using Spiller a little bit I think they're they're thirsty for another guy to to ride a little bit um so and you know i I, like i said i do think they're like if he's got a good agent which eckler seems like a really good dude so maybe he doesn't want to do this but like this is like they're they're on their money they're on their rookie contract with the quarterback like try to go get some money You, you need to get a raise man like this is your last chance they're already not paying running backs i could see maybe something like that happen so you know a lot of uh if ands butts and and making a case for a guy that I liked pre draft, so you could call it take lock, I guess if you want. Which we um, only had him one spot higher. You know, we had him RB three pre draft. Then then you don't yell at me. You guys are the ones that wanted me to tell tell you no, no. about the big. I'm not don't yell, don't yell at me about that. Case. We're not we're not yelling. I like it. I, just I'm making I'm, a case. Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm I'm giving my explanation. Oh, I'm telling no, like, you. Like I I like Spiller and I really wanted him. You to, hate him. <laughs> I wanted him to run, not crawl at his forty-yard dash, but like, but he had know. an ab- abdominal strain, man. Yeah, he, he was he was a little hurt. I think is what they were saying. Sure, and Plus, Jalen Wider Meyer had crutches. Guy ever. He yeah, to be the fastest guy ever. You know. Yeah, I, I kind of already knew that that was the case by watching him. I mean, I, I just I feel good about the player at two eight. Like I'm, I'm a. I'm a little bit heavy in the run. Like, I'm going to take the shots on the running backs. We're late in the second round there. I, I like the player. If, I can see if you want to say Mechie and Pierce, you know, Alec Pierce over Spiller. I, I can't really. So who would you, who, would, who else would you, who would you rather have? I would rather have Trey McBride. I'd rather have Mechie Pierce. I'd okay. rather have yeah, Brian I, I was, Robinson. I'd rather have one. Oh, absolutely Robinson. not. I'd rather have Jelani Woods. I'd rather Definitely have, not. Um, I'd rather have Tyler. Tyler Algier or all guy or not sure how to say your name, Tyler. Um, I would even think about Matt Corral over Isaiah Spiller. Wow. Mm. You really hate Isaiah Spiller is what you're saying. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's uh, fine. More from me. More from me. Yeah, you know, perfect. To each his own. You got to go listen to your plums. You know? I feel I felt like when I made I was on that clock and like, the, like I said, those are the three guys. It was McBride, Pearson and um, 
Mechi for me that I would, you know, consider taking there. And I like trying to get any of those guys. Wanda, once we get into the third, I'll trade in and try to try to snag him. Um, but I'm, I'm taking Spiller over Wandell every time. And I know that's not smart draft capital wise, um, if you want to play the percentages, but I felt like that was probably going to be a pick that people either really liked or really, you know, disliked. So you're, you would, you're, you're giving me more grief for Spiller at two, eight than Zamir white at two, five. Come on, man. Well, we yeah, I like Zamir white. He- yeah, so do I, but I mean, come on. <laughs> They already didn't pick up Josh Jacobs' fifth-year deal. Oh, who gives a shit? They could still extend clearly him. Clearly, you know? the Raiders. <laughs> well, they we'll see how that goes. Him. And they, they really could draft could another get... running back next year. I mean, what do we I know? So, I mean, so, so could Spiller. The, car- right. so right. could the Chargers. Chargers. Right. So, you know. Um, but I, I think realistically right in this draft that there's like seven or eight picks that you're like, okay, I feel better about the first seven or eight. And everything past that. Mm-hmm. Who like when is yeah. the wild wild west in your rookie drafts right like whoever if yeah. someone feels like you know Desmond Ritter is that guy at the one nine right I'm in a league where it's 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 full tiered premium so it's two points per reception for a tight end um, and I've taken Trey McBride at the one nine because yeah. that's how people value tight ends in that league so it's it's right really the first thing about rookie drafts is just understanding the league that you play in right sure and i know that no one likes wide receivers in that league so i'm only dra- i think i drafted one wide receiver out of like 12 picks the rest you were all running be, backs and tight ends you guys must be playing for a decent amount of money uh, i think it's just 50 dollars a person i think is the buy-in huh. Usually the cheaper leagues, they love the wide receivers because you can have them for 10 years, but the big money leagues, you need running backs because you want to win. But it's, it's also a f- full-tiered premium, so it's right. it's one Two point points, per yeah, reception a lot for wide receivers, that's a one, lot. And a half, one and a half PPR for running backs. Mm-hmm. It's like RB gotcha. premium so kind of tight end Two premium for tight ends. Premium. Yeah, so it like kind of makes things a little more exciting, and if the running backs get over 100 yards, then it goes to 0.15 points per gotcha. yard. Right. Yeah. So then it kind of then you're 15 points for 100 yards instead of 10. And then, you know, and then things kind of go from there. But right. yeah, so it, ju- it just makes wide receivers just kind of worth less because you only have to start one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, right, I think I think some people would hate the McBride pick if I would have made it there and some people would have loved it. Um, so, you know, appreciate you, you coming on, though, even though you yeah, really man. closed with a bummer. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Knocking. You're doing good. Now you're getting a like, scathing review in your. <laughs> and when we wrap. No, nah, man. We hey, really appreciate you coming on. Be sure to go check out Kane at De- Devi underscore Kane on Twitter. Check him out at the Devi Marketplace podcast. Uh, appreciate you coming on, man. Had a blast. Hey, thanks for having me on. And make sure you go check out the uh, free Discord. It's absolutely free. Make sure you join. We're at over 560 people in the Discord for free. So make sure you come and check that out. Um, let just come and talk with people, whether you want to talk Devi, Dynasty, Redraft, whether you want to talk about C2C, any college football news, whether you want to talk about food, you want to talk about video games. Hell, you even want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Like, there's a spot for that. So make sure you come on over to the uh, Discord and and just kind of chop it up with some people because all they want to do is just, you know, talk about football and talk about, you know, whatever interests them. Um, yeah. So you're always going to find five more people that share the same interest with you over there. So it's kind of cool. Awesome, awesome man. man. Yeah, we need to have you back on and have a Debbie discussion because we don't do enough for sure. around here. So, all right, well, all right, buddy. appreciate, appreciate you. you. Pierre Strong, no, no Pierre Strong over Haskins? Let me let me pull something up here real quick. I want to see. <laughs> he thought he was getting out of here. Now you well, make him- I was gonna ask him about it, and then I was like, "Well, I don't want to. I don't want to keep him." And then I was like, "Ah, before we go, I just gotta ask. See, see." So I like Pierre Strong. I think it was. It's. Um, I compared him to. I basically said like he's kind. Of, he's Elijah Mitchell, kind of that that type of prospect. Uh, he's just in such a right. Right. Running back hell, you know, yeah. like who complete who opposite can, of all the other guys you just talked about as far as, you know, potential opportunity and path to. Yeah. And I mean, you can see it, you know, may, because maybe they move on from Paris, why it's gone. But I mean, 
crap, who knows what Bill's going to do? Right. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, maybe they re-sign Harris and we're just looking at five guys that are, you know, just like um, and they cannibalizing Kevin each Harrison. other. Yeah, I mean, it's... I'm not really sure what the hell the Patriots are doing and, and you know, that, that backfield's always somewhat of a nightmare um, fantasy-wise. I mean, Harris was... was fairly startable for the most part um and it really did overall had a good season but week to week it was hard to uh really rely on that so it just seems like going to be more of the same with yeah, even more yeah. headaches i mean but do you like the yeah. talent of pierre more than like a haskins i i mean he's got pro- probably some more upside based on re- receiving but he's not i mean he, even strong really wasn't like a huge receiver he was just he yeah. was a very efficient receiver yeah but I mean, even he wasn't like utilized all that much. But I, I don't think it was, it, it was probably more of a scheme thing there too. I don't think they threw a ton. Yeah. To he to had the backs. Forty four catches in the last two years. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's good that he, it's good that he did it late. Yeah. Um And he is very, like I said, very efficient. You got to consider obviously the competition level. But I mean, he's. I think we can. We can have faith Bill will find a way to utilize him, but just to what extent is right. the question. You know, you're I don't think he's gonna be the goal line guy, so you know that that's out. So we, we're really just hoping that he's he's James White. Um after James White leaves, yeah. he, I, you know, it so. sucks because I like all the fucking guys. I like Harris, you know. I like Ramondre. Yeah, you know, yeah. I like I like Pierre Strong. And it's like Bill, Bill, you know. I mean, and he's done it for years. So I don't think we should ever expect anything different from him. But I, the thing I I kind of took from it is like how much like if they're drafting a bunch of running backs, like what does this really mean well, for offenses. like Mac Jones and the yeah. passing offense? You know, like. What does that say about Mac Jones and and what like how long is it going to take him to really become more than just a game manager if it is going to happen? Yeah. So, I mean, well, if we're, that, stopping, that's, if we're stopping chatting you even longer from getting out of here, I wanted to ask. I, I was not going to ask the question, but since you asked one more, I'm going to ask one more. How high would you take Kenneth Walker in this draft? Because in a rookie really draft or in a startup? In this rookie draft, where you, you got him at the one two. Uh, no. Uh, I, gonna go off brand at the one two. One four. I'll probably I'll probably go London and Burks at one two and one three, and then come back to Walker at four. Yeah. Okay. Just with the no, you don't like the passing percentages and all that jazz. I don't think it really matters a whole lot going to Seattle. Right. Um. I mean, the the biggest thing is going to be like. What what is their offense going to be this year? Sure. Yeah, I mean, they. I can't believe that they're not going to run the piss out of the ball. Right. right. Even, you know, in, even in negative so, game scripts, they're going to pound the yeah. fucking football. So, so, like, I don't think you should be really worried about, I mean, potential opportunity as far as, like, he's probably going to get 12, 15 touches a game. You know, they're, they're going to – Hand, like Penny and Carson were both doing it at the same time, handling 15 to 20 touches a game for a while there when they were both healthy. And that's probably what Pete's going to try and do. Um, I think it's better for the offense, as weird as it sounds, if Gino's the starter. Yeah. <laughs> and so agreed. that that probably uh, lifts the ceiling a little bit as far as scoring opportunities. Are you a, um, are you a Seahawks fan? The family is our Seahawks fans. Uh, I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh, okay. I I was born in Texas, and the first football game I ever watched was the uh, the '92 Super Bowl. And everybody in my house was rooting for the Bills, and I was like, "I'm from Texas. I'll root for the Cowboys." And just watch them go out and just demolish the Bills, uh-huh. and was like, "Yep, that's my team." That's it. <laughs> and so, been repping them since '92. So, Love it. Uh, but yeah, everybody else in the house are Seahawks fans, and uh, I mean, if I'm if it doesn't affect Dallas in any way, I'll root for Seattle. Yeah, I'm a Niners fan, so. Oh, I mean, I, I've gotten to the point where I used to like despise other teams, like, and now it's just. I look at, 
I look at everything kind of more through a fantasy lens. Yeah. You're too vested so, in all the teams to really hate exactly. anyone. Yeah. Oh, there's exactly. There's only one team I hate, and it's most of the Seahawks. <laughs> It's mostly the Seahawks. Pete, yeah, Carroll, right? Pete Carroll fucking drives me up a wall, and they just, <laughs> the and, and they 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 beat us. They beat us always. Like they just always doesn't matter. Like you I mean, probably got a couple years of victories coming though. Yeah, and there, there was a couple pivotal years there where we just got them, but for the most part, even when we were highest of highs, they'd find they, a way. Man, they had some. They had some uh, the the NFC West for that that few years where it was San Francisco, Seattle, and then LA kind of in the, in the back end there, like the, it was some epic battles between yeah. those teams. So, man, like yeah. the whole, the, the, the playoff game in general, you know, with the Sherman pick uh-huh. and, or the Sherman tip right. and then the pick like that kind of epitomized, like what those two teams have been doing into each other for the last, you know, however many years, right? You know, since since Cam laid out Vernon Davis, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I, All right, man. Well, we'll let you get out of here. Yeah, Appreciate man. it. Uh, thanks so much. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed talking to you. I feel like you did a nice job of relating everything and not speaking in a manner of that wasn't able to be understood. And and I think actionable content was a good uh, way to I frame so. it there. Yeah, no, that was great. I hope so. Thank so, you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, fellas. And um, anytime uh, you guys need somebody to come in and chat it up a little bit on some running backs or something, just let me know. Okay, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good night, man. You guys as well. All right, Jeff Bell. The draft has ended, and we just like to get a you know just get your opinion on who maybe what was a reach or what picks you really thought somebody smashed, or it's been it's been more negativity than positivity. So you you know go 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 wherever you'd like. Yeah, so one that stood out to me in early second round, uh, Zamir White went off the board. And Mm -hmm. that's a guy that um, I think pre-draft, we were a little bit excited about the athleticism there with Zamir White. Um, But he's had some major injuries in college, and he's almost a nothing in the passing game throughout his career at Georgia. And he lands with the Raiders. And the Raiders bringing in that Josh McDaniels as their new head coach, I think they're going to bring some of that Patriot mentality when it comes to running backs. They're going to keep guys in very specific roles. And I don't think there's any receiving upside for Zamir White. So to use an early second round pick when, you know, you can look in the mid third and Tyler Algier Algier draft lasted till the mid third. And that's a guy that I think that they're going to have similar roles. Even Algier could have a better chance at early production and carving out even a bigger role with the Falcons and you get him around later. And so I think there's a cluster of running backs that are pretty similar in this class where, you know, Zamir White, Brian Robinson, Tyler Algier, all these guys are, are kind of, uh, you're hoping for early down, you're hoping for goal line backs and you're hoping for a little bit of pass catching utility. And you want to use those third round picks on those guys instead of your second round picks because the depth of wide receivers still kind of there in the second round and mm-hmm. then having the other quarterbacks taking chances on those taking chance on a guy like Trey McBride in the second round uh, are where I would defer there versus grabbing um, just one of these running backs that are outside of the outside really once you get past Richard White I don't, I'm not going to touch running back until the third round for uh, I'm sure you've li- under, uh, figured this out by now. For the listeners, uh, you know we we recorded all these shows with uh, these various guests, esteemed guests. Appreciate y'all for coming on at different times. Right, we haven't had Garrett on yet to talk about that two five pick where he took Zamir White. We did have him on the show uh, earlier in the off season, and that was a big one of his guys. You know, I can see him trying to plant his flag for Zamir White. Uh, we did, you know, we got into some Zamir White pre-draft. Really like what we saw. You're right. Not much. I can't really argue against you in the passing game there. Uh, but, you know, Josh Jacobs, they didn't extend him. They didn't pick up his fifth-year option. He could be gone next year. And, you know, what if what if Zamir White gets that LeGarrette Blunt role, you know, <laughs> in the Josh McDaniel system? I mean, that's the upside. You know, that's what you're hoping for. You'd be Damian Harris. Touchdowns. You can yeah. pretty much pencil him in for 18 touchdowns in 23. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I just yeah, I I think that's probably one of the bigger reaches for sure in the in the second round, just as far as you know where you could have gotten. Obviously, there's no trading to be had in a mock draft, um, but you don't have to take Zamir White there, like you said. It's more of a end of the second, third round pick. I think even if you yeah, love I, I got him, you know. 
I I did a draft so about the same time. I got him at the three hundred nine in a draft that we the yeah, that. time that we did this. So yeah, so you're stoked about that, right? You like that? Or yeah, that- um, yeah, and you know, like I said, there there are a bunch of backs that are you know I think I you can probably push Damian Pierce and Isaiah Spiller above them, but at the same time, like all these guys that I think one or two of them you can get in the third round, and if that's the direction mm-hmm. that you want to head with your second round pick, um, you know, kind of you can move back maybe. I don't know. Everybody says move back, but I think it's very it's if everybody's saying move back, nobody's moving up. And that's right. just the reality of the situation that if you don't have anybody out there saying, hey, move into this tier. And and that is something that I do believe in that I do try to do. It's just that so often that when guys are on the clock, they want to a lot to move back and it's like everybody wants to move back but then the asking price of moving back is still trying to ask for a premium and and you're not really understanding that everybody in that pick range wants to move back and you're all kind of jacked the price up whereas (laughs) that's not really how the market works right yeah no i mean you gotta be up for that sounds like a good video title that we need to do uh (laughs) there you go if everybody's trading back because we have you know we've traded up to get guys in the first round and second round uh and and that like you said, if everybody's zigging, maybe zag a little bit. That's, yeah. I'm a big believer in that when it comes to moving around the draft board. Yeah, so so you would you you like Pierce and Spiller, but probably back into the second, early third for those guys. Yeah, I think that it's um, you know I, I think that I'm kind of burnt still by the Michael Carter thing because um, you know we saw you him. Big Michael kinda, Carter fan. No, I, I was completely out on him. Um, okay. But, you know, at the same time, it's just that having that. Um, and part of it is being a Debbie guy and knowing what's in the 23 class that we've got. Mm-hmm. You know, we could have like five or six running backs that are as good as that. It could be running back two in this class coming up in this class coming up. And, and, and there are a lot of places that they could find their running back in this class where, you know, maybe Damian Pierce is a guy for a year in Houston, but then they turn right. around and draft Bajon Robinson in their own backyard. And all of a sudden, um, yeah. Damian Pierce is, is nothing, but it's, um, I think you can maybe hope to get some immediate production, but I think long-term the value that you're looking at in that early to mid second range, um, it's still worth it to take a risk on one of the quarterbacks, either Ritter or Willis sitting there. And I would lean that direction or some of the wide receivers, because we see yeah. some of these guys, um, you know, we're seeing Jahan Dotson slip into the early second so, round. Of the drafts. That, speaking of spots to, to dive into anytime that that happens, that was immediate figuring four. out how I can get up into that yep. two, 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 four spot in some cases to get Jahan Dotson. Like if you're just going to kick him down, I'll, I'll, I'll take the shot. I mean, I get it. He's buried in Washington. You could say, but uh, things can change so fast, you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And bet on the talent there, you know, bet on, he went 16th in the draft and yeah, Teddy, um, you know, McLaurin, Terry McLaurin, he's um, frustrated out of there. Yeah. Yeah, He could be gone and Curtis Curtis went gone and you know, Curtis hasn't been healthy and he's got an out. So he could be out of there. I mean, all of a sudden it could be Jahan Dotson numero uno with a quickness, new quarterback coming in and people, yeah, Bryce young in there in the drafts or whatever. And yeah, all of a sudden everybody's in on that and it's just crazy that value can get on that. And that's a guy that, you know, you mentioned it. Yeah, I've been trying to move into that early second. There are certainly there are definitely tiers in this draft, and it's very clear. You know, I think that once you get past really that the 106 or the 107, maybe even the 108 in that first round, then you're kind of sitting in a little bit of dead zone where you're probably going to get a similar player at the 109, 110, as you might get at the 203, 204. And but then it falls off again, kind of there. And so Mm -hmm. if you're sitting outside of those tiers, and you know, if you're in a league that's not super plugged in and you maybe have some time before your rookie draft and people haven't really realized those tiers, I'd be looking to move up into those tiers. And and that's kind of how I spent the month of March. Um, Once that kind of crystallized in my mind and like where you were going to want to be. And then really when we got the draft, like I had a couple of weeks before I did a couple drafts. And so I was really hammering. Like once we knew Malik Wills was really kind of gone, out of that first range, um, you know, mm-hmm. trying to get up and trying to get one of those top guys as as much as I could. Um, Jameson Williams is a guy that was falling. Um, I was surprised because I think he's clearly in the the top. I push him closer to the top five than the top eight, and I was able mm-hmm. to get him at the like 107, 108 in a couple of leagues. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's it is. Uh, Would you trade uh, a random 23 first for Jameson Williams? 
that's a little bit more iffy. Um, it, all, you right, know, Ed, all right. If it's going to look at 23 so first this way. Okay. Yeah. So look at 23 first this way. If you're, if the pick we that also you're had trading, some already coming in. So now we're the cut. We're not barren of 23 first. We now had we had, own. Is right. the team going to make one. playoffs that traded the pick? Um, we traded our we own. We traded pick. someone else's pick. I don't know yeah, exactly just, whose pick it was. Uh, we feel like our team, we took over this team. It's like our only orphan that we've taken over and we decided to tear it down. And so yeah, we kept yeah. our pick. Uh, we had the 1-1 one, one this year and uh, earned the 1-1. One, one, and, you know, maybe things turn around if Saquon comes back and crushes and Brees Hall and, and we got Lance. Actually, we traded Lance for Trevor. And if so there it, things could go well where our pick is in the mid-range, you know, but – we we kept ours and then traded the other one away. Not exactly sure. That's why I just just a random. You know, it, it, could, it could be anywhere from six to to eleven or twelve. You know, I mean, I, I don't yeah. think it's a it's a top top pick that we gave away. But who sure. you never know? I mean, sure, it's hard to predict know. that. You know, I just a random twenty three first. We did. We, I think we threw MVS. We threw team. MVS in the deal as well. Oh okay. yeah, I see you. <laughs> Hey, I mean, you know. he was he was a dead asset for a minute there, and all of a sudden he got revived. If that was going to make the deal happen, here you go. Um, yeah, and uh, if you believe in Jameis Williams, I, I think that's a fine deal to do. You know, you, you're getting a still a young guy, and um, yeah, I don't, I don't blame. I, I don't have a problem doing that deal. Um, I I don't know it right now. Just the intrinsic value that are sitting on twenty three first, mm-hmm. I have a hard time not moving it for a an established, established player. player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want like one of those established guys that are like 24 years old. That um, you know, if I can throw a like a Jacoby Myers or some like eye candy, that you'll still get some production. But here's your 23 first, right. and like that's the moves that I would be looking to get those. But um, I have been gobbling up as many as I possibly can in my leagues. I'm sitting most leagues. I'm sitting about three to five deep on 23 first. Yeah, we we came in with with. Uh two and some seconds and some thirds and we got so like i said if saquon goes off he's probably gonna get we'll probably try to move him and get some more for like there's assets on the team to try to acquire more first so we just decided let's just start three wide receivers we had no receivers trying sure. to build that receiver room um we took we got Brees, burks and jameson uh in this draft um That's and then, doing some work so good job there yeah jameson was hitting at 108 and we we just you know shot up in there and and Sent the uh, offer to the open bar guys saying, hey, it's the UDP else's industry kind of league where, uh, you know, a lot of guys know know what they're doing in there. And, and they sat on the clock and we we're like, James is hanging around. Maybe we should go because we liked him. You know, we can make an argument for him being at the top of that wide receiver tier you know yeah, I, I think i probably have him at the top of the second tier or at the end of the first tier but i could also i mean he could be the best one in this class so very much so. A, very easily a little swing it's a cheaper league too it's only 50 bucks so like i'm like fuck it let's go get let's go get jameson sure yep. well hey jeff really enjoyed it thanks for sticking around thanks for for coming on thanks for doing the draft thanks you know i know it was a lot of extracurriculars here um for uh so thanks for helping us out and thanks for it's a pleasure meeting you yeah, absolutely man. thank you so much for reaching out to me and for having me on anytime we can do a fun rookie mock draft and then break it down too so you added that extra element so thank you so much for your guys time back with matt hicks we spent a little bit of time uh with everybody after the draft uh just kind of going over kind of giving you the floor going wherever you want uh you can go positive you can go negative you can go just you know, summary of, of strategy or, you know, whatever you like, man. Uh, so Matt Hicks at uh, the FF underscore educator and obviously the creator of the rookie big board. So we've had a lot of fun conversation. If you've missed that, go check out the, the picks throughout the rounds. But uh, now we're going to get a little after uh, after draft content here. So wh- where you want to go here, Matt, floor is yours. Man, it's a it was an interesting draft, I will say. You know, I, I love that it wasn't it didn't feel super chalky. You know, some picks that definitely jumped out. I mean, Angelo taking Sky Moore at 106. Talk about going to get your guy. Mm. Hey, listen, might not be popular. Samir White 205. I like it, Price. I, I like the aggressiveness there. I think that's a good pick. Brian Robinson at 301. I mean, come on, what are we doing there? Great value as well. And, uh, you know, even getting into the fourth round, man, Bellis Jones at 4-7. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm embarrassed that I didn't take him at 311. You yeah. know, what is that? Uh, shame on me, but Kane, that's a that's a sweet pick. Yeah, that was that was a strong strong move by him. He he seemed to be catching some value there on the back half of that draft. He caught caught Algier at at three seven, which whether you're an Algier guy or not, that's strong value. Um, and then Velas at four seven, I think that's a, a really strong pick. It makes um, up for taking Damian Pierce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say he got value all the way through, but I mean, I you know I, I would probably pick a couple other guys before Pierce there. He did say he wanted to trade that once once Pierce got like a starting role. He's so like, you, then you got to move him. But. You like the Zamir. So that was probably the most hate yeah. uh, that, that people that, that, that was received on this. Um, what are your, what are your rationale for Zamir at two five? Listen, and I know, I know uh, my man price has been high on Zamir oh, yeah. white for a while. And there's good reason. Uh, Zamir white. If Zamir white didn't have uh, two ACL injuries, which he did uh, late in high school, senior year, and then early on in college, uh, both ACLs, I think we would have been talking about him in a lot different of a way. In terms of being a pure rusher, right, I'm not talking about well-rounded running back, everything like that. Just in terms of being a pure rusher, there's an argument for Zamir White to be the best pure rusher in this class. And so, you know, Oof. take away – yeah, I, I mean, he's fantastic in between the tackles. I mean, in terms of vision, he's fantastic. He's explosive. Uh, he has uh, excellent footwork, cuts on a dime. I mean, Zamir White, I, I absolutely love him. And then you plug him into this Las Vegas offense, which literally uh, it was either right before the draft or right after the draft, intentionally does not pick up Josh Jacobs' option. I think we understand that Josh Jacobs is kind of a, uh, you know, he's fine. Like, he is what he is. They're going to give him the rock. He's going to run it four yards, and then they're going to do it 200 more times a season. But are they going to give him that big second running back contract? I just don't see it happening. Yeah. Especially with them giving out money otherwise, you know, picking up Devontae Adams, adding this other money, you know, extending Derek Carr, right? I think Zamir White in 2023 could easily be the starting running back for the Las Vegas Raiders. They're always going to have a more pass catching running back. That's always kind of been their MO. But Zamir White can step in and do what Josh Jacobs is doing. And quite frankly, I think he can do it at a higher level. So I think at 205, man, it's a great pick. I know it's a little bit above value, but it's not that significantly above his ADP. I'm absolutely cool with it. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I hope, I hope with... Garrett listens the whole way through because if he does, <laughs> he, he's going he's gonna to be real sad and then finally you're going to hit him with some some pizzazz yeah. some finally somebody he's gonna reach out to you and be like thank you man because everyone was just <laughs> just dogging him for that yeah i mean i, I agree I think, out, I think it's a little early on the on the on the value i mean I'm, Which, I'm probably more of a back end of the second on on zamir um I mean, but I'm, i do I'm like the cool talent uh, you know a, a good bit and and like you said i i think that they're i think kenneth walker probably would take the crown for me for best pure runner yeah. Um, but Zamir is certainly right there and, and, you know, just a nice combination of speed and power, uh, with, with Zamir. And, and I, you know, I think, like you said, I think the footwork is pretty solid that you'd like to see a little bit more with the hands, but I think a player with that level is certainly capable of catching a couple of balls. But, you know, if, if he Which is going to be the Raiders find. guy, you know, we, we, we think we don't know exactly what McDaniel's going to do, but you know, we, we think that there would be, there'd be a pretty decent hedge that there would probably be a pass catching running back involved. Uh, to do some of that work. So um, uh, probably bump Zamir down a little bit, but I, I agree for the most part. Which we had, we had yeah. Garrett on kind of late in the, in this whole process. We didn't do everybody in order. We just kind of did everyone when we could get them. And so we kind of knew, we kind of gave him the floor for Zamir. And was like, well, you got to really nail this <laughs> home, which we've had Garrett on pre-draft. And he was talking about Zamir and how much he liked him. And, 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 you know, I, the hype was kind of building a little bit, and we got into him and, and really liked the tape. There is there is some stat that somebody has going around that he doesn't break any tackles. But, like, if you watch the tape, man, he's breaking tackles. Like, he's – he people don't – he, he, he tackles make the defender tackler. look like, stupid. Right. Like, he if, makes line – SEC linebackers look if you, stupid. I mean, if you drag gone. a dude for five yards before he tackles you, yeah. is that not kind of considered a broken tackle too? Like, you know – right. I, I didn't even talk about his contact balance. It's fantastic. Has right. Yeah. And there They're are right. there are catches to be seen where there's yeah. they're handsy and he can make them and then he look good in in the gauntlet drills and and at the combine uh I don't I guess running backs maybe don't run the gauntlet but like he looked good catching passes he 
looked okay. You know, we don't need this man to be the third down satellite back. We just need a couple catches, you know, and, and, and we've seen the bangers be successful in that Josh McDaniels offense. Now, you know, they could have easily draft another guy next year, and it kind of hurt Zamir. But, you know, 2-5, probably a little bit too early, but what, uh, you know. And, and, and you know, Garrett, Garrett is like, I can't trade back, you know. I can't move right. around. I want to plant my flag. I want to. I don't want to get out of here without talking about him. So, And we kind of <laughs> defended him to the guys that were just dogging him about that. But I like it. I like it. Defending the Zamir White. Zeus, I maybe. Mean, it- you look at it, it's just a number, right? Like 2-5. Look at the running backs that went 2-7, 2-8, right? Like Damian Pierce, I'm not on board, man. I, his vision's poor. I, I think his speed is limited. I think, you know, folks are just crowning him the running back one in Houston, maybe without, you know, I don't want to say without watching the tape or really understanding, you know, his full profile. But I think he got overhyped through the draft process. And you have Isaiah Spiller, who I like, but he's sitting behind Austin Eckler or at least splitting carries, right? They got TDP, T- Tyrion Davis Price, which, you know, I know he snuck in and got that draft capital, but that situation's rough, man. It mm-hmm. really is. So, you know, I know 205 feels a little high, but if I'm willing to take him at 209, and, but the guys in between are Pierce Spiller and TDP, why not take him at 205? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's that's good. The only other guy I'd say, you know, is Brian Robinson that really deserves to be in that conversation along with Samir White. And, you know, Ryan got him. Cheap, cheap at yeah. three one. Yeah, seems seems like that's kind of sta- standard fare for Robinson back end two, early three, and a lot of the rookie drafts that I've been in so far. Uh, obviously, I took Spiller, so I, I would take Spiller over Zamir. I'd take Spiller um, two five, two four all day long. I, I I don't see the opportunity any different than Rashad White's for what Isaiah Spiller has, and I like the or player Zemir, really better than much better than uh, Rashad White. Um, and, you know, Austin Eckler's got underpaid and probably should hold out. It's probably his last chance to get money, and he's not exactly been the healthiest guy. So, I mean, I, I like Skiller's, Spiller's uh, skill set there. Um, I got one more question, and then I'll let you get out of here. You, you good? Yeah, man. What, what, McBride seems to be the toughest guy to kind of nail down here, tight end premium-wise. Um what what are your what are your thoughts on? What if he was like, no, I can't do one more question. I would have been all right, man. We're good. <laughs> well, since you asked about Trey McBride, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Do it. Um, you know he's interesting. It's uh, th- I guess there's multiple ways to look at Trey McBride in the Arizona offense, right? You know, you look at his profile. He's an athletic tight end. He's a pass catching tight end. He's great uh, hands, great contested catch ability, decent route runner. And so you look at him and you look at his profile and you kind of expect him to be in a position where he is used, you know, as a, as a hybrid tight end wide receiver. So he lands in Arizona and your first thought is like, boom, this is what we wanted, right? Like he's in this situation where his skill set is going to be utilized. Like Cliff Kingsbury does not want him to block. I, I don't think right. Cliff Kingsbury half the time wants his offensive lineman to block, right? <laughs> sure. So you're looking at Trey McBride and he's going to be used. I, I think they're going to move him out wide, right? They're going to line him right. up split in. He, he will probably have his hand in the dirt, maybe like 20% of the time. That might be hyperbolic, but it fits. However, you're looking around and you're like, man, there's a lot of pieces here, right? Yeah. Like there's Rondell Moore that's going to get his. Of course, once DeAndre Hopkins is going to come back, he demands – you know, 25 plus uh, percent of that market share. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a tricky spot. I think at 210, where he went in this draft, like that's right. Late second round is is right. You know, I mentioned earlier, you know, when we were talking about the draft picks, you never reach for positional uh, value. You really want to, you know, settle on a player's value. But, you know, there is a teardrop, right? Looking from Trey McBride down. So, when there's that strong of a tier break, you have to take that into consideration. And so, you know, late second round, that's just about right for me. Um, I, I don't think I have much, if any, Trey McBride yet, but that's not necessarily intentional. It's kind of just the way my drafts have fallen. Sure. Uh, he's been probably the hardest guy to rank for me and, and decide where, because on one hand, I'm like, man, I, I love what this could be. Um, but, you know, it might take a minute to really come to fruition and round out. And then tight ends, who the hell knows? I mean, there's there's plenty of second round tight ends that just never even turn into anything at all. So uh, just yeah. 
thought I'd wrap up with that, man. So if you got anything else that you want to touch on or we get you out of here. Man, I think we've chopped it up, man. I think we've picked this draft apart. Yeah. All right, man. Well, we really appreciate your time. Really appreciate you hanging out for an extra little five, ten minutes here. And uh, we'll be looking forward to more content from Mr. Hicks, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, Phil. So we've wrapped up the draft. We've given everybody opportunity at the end. We're bringing back uh, D-Bro, Derek Brown here. Um, just to give you the floor and talk about anything, any reach or any, if you want to go positive or recap or anything that you got here in this draft that, that you saw that you liked, didn't like, or uh, some strategy or whatever you got. Uh, there's a few picks that stuck out to me. I mean, going through the draft room and stuff like that, I mean, I look, having the balls for somebody to sit here and take Sky Moore at the 106 over Jamison Williams, Ooh. Chris Olave, and a few other people, Hi. I love it. Love, love it, it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Like, everybody wants to sit here and stand against the hype. It, you know, it, honestly, guys, it's okay to like good players. And it's really okay to like good players that land in really good situations. Yeah. That's oh, fine. Clyde Edwards Alaire, though. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> come on, come on. Sky Moore is. Well, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll give you one on top of that. Sky Moore is like Clyde Edwards Alaire in the sense that he is like a running back in the open field. Uh, when you put the ball in his hands, Duke can break tackles. Duke has vision for days. So uh, Clyde's been banged I, up, I man. Th- Let's give Clyde a, a, a tiny little break. It, the hype was well, so high and even way higher than Sky Moore. Look, you, you shouldn't have taken Clyde Edwards-Alaire over JT. That was ridiculous. No, that's fair. But that's fair. And, that. and I'm guilty of it, too. I, like, right. I'll own the L on that. Like, right. But I liked Clyde a lot, a lot coming sure. out of Maybe LSU. Too, yeah. I love the skill set. Um, I thought that... Yeah, you could talk about size and things like that, but I think health. And then we also hear, like, through the tea leaves, like, we're like, okay, like, uh, where was this report of him having gallbladder surgery in the offseason, right. not being able to train the entire offseason, losing weight, having weight. issues? Yeah. Where the hell was that report? You know, like, all the time. College? <laughs> We get well. I mean, we all the time we get these reports after the season, and we find out what guys went oh. through throughout the entirety of the season. More so, and it's in like, college though. Like usually they can't. Oh yeah, hide no, that it's shit definitely in, the in college, college, but it's did. it's definitely in college, no doubt. Definitely in college, but there are a lot of times where we don't nearly get any type of view about like what actually goes on behind closed doors. Like talking about rookies. Sincere McCormick just got put on the IR and we don't even know what he injured <laughs> for the whole. And they said he's going to miss he's, the entire season. He's done. But it's undisclosed. <laughs> it's undisclosed. All right. So, I mean, we just don't know. And so I, I love the Sky Moore pick. I love the balls to sit here and have that because I love the landing spot. Love the player. Sure. I took him at 105 in a draft. So I don't hate that at all. The other pick that. Kind of stood out to me because I'm really high on the player. Um, the fact that Isaiah Spiller fell all the way to the 208 mm-hmm. uh, is, is I'm not going to say it's egregious because I'm not going to be that hyperbolic about it. But it's a player that honestly, when we walked into the draft cycle, I was not like banging the drum for Isaiah Spiller. Like mm-hmm. I was like, okay, he's a good but not great talent. I love the landing spot for the Chargers. I think he's going to have a role from day one. And if anything happens to Austin Eckler, much less, it, I mean, we're, we're talking about a top five scoring offense mm-hmm. that if there's an offense in the NFL that can support two top 24, two top 36 running backs, I mean, it's the Chargers, guys. They're, yeah. they're going to put up points for days. Yeah, that's funny because that was somebody else's, uh, they thought that was a reach. The worst pick. Oh, really? Thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think it's the worst pick. I think it's... Uh, I, I would have, like, kind of like I, I talked about with Christian Watson and Alec Pierce getting gift basketed to me in this draft, I would have been pressing the button to draft Isaiah Spiller at that point in the draft so damn hard I would have broken my phone. <laughs> Your boy TDP got, got some love at, at 2-9. You like that one? Yep. I mean, you love it when he doesn't head to the third round. Right. Um, because he shouldn't as a third round running back. So it's nice to see that, like, would you in a room full of sharks. Pierce? If he was there, um, him and Pierce are back to back. Honestly, I could, I could make you a case for either one of them. Okay. Um, so really, I mean, we're splitting hairs. I, I think that they're both. If I were, uh, I probably would at this point in the off season, I probably would take TDP only because I love Pierce, but 
the more and more I've had time to marinate about this draft class and stuff like that, I, I just I get more and more fears about the Houston Texans doing some kind of dumb shit and running like a three way committee. And we see all this Rex Burkhead that we don't want to see. Mm-hmm. We see a bunch of Marlon Mack that we don't want to see. And Damian Pierce is kind of stuck in purgatory. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a fourth round pick and then break out this year, I mean, he could just get cucked just like Michael Carter. I mean, it's, it's, it could be in the cards. Good use of the word there. And then, so, tra- <laughs> so Trey McBride would be off the table for you at 210? Yeah, I wouldn't take him that early. Okay. I, again, like that, that's just how I approach tight ends yeah. and premium. Like, I'm not going to, invest a high pick or I mean not even a high pick like I'm not going to invest a second round pick and a tight end when you have second round wide receivers that are consistently going after him and it's not even just that like I I religiously mocked Trey McBride in a lot of my mocks because the landing spot fit the expected draft position fit if he'd landed somewhere like where there was a runway and you could see it in your mind's eye of him having relevancy not only this year but into next year and being the dude like if he had gone to green bay fine that's cool but he goes to arizona zach words just re-upped like Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna push that aside like i'm I'm just not gonna go for a tight end at this point in the draft when i can take the shots later on athletic guys they do have an easy out in 24 that's two years so Ertz is definitely gonna be there two years two years but he's also not the picture of health you know so you could make an argument a little bit about that, but no, I've been having a hard time with with McBride because I do like the player, but there, like you said, there are still a couple of wide receivers and a couple of running backs where I'm like, I feel like there, there could be decent opportunity right away to really make a splash, and I like McBride, but like I'm having a real hard time placing him exactly where I would take him, um, in in tight end premium or non, you know. So. Yeah, it just it comes down to he'll always go in these rookie drafts way before I'm willing to to draft him. Um, maybe Fair. if he falls in like a startup or something like that. But like, I mean, for me, um, there wasn't a big, um, I mean, for me, why not? Like a, a, a guy that was my tight end, two tight end, three in this class. If I want to just take a block tight end, but he's super freaking talented, then fine. I'll just take Jeremy Ruckert in the fourth or the fifth round of a rookie draft or mm-hmm. pick him up off the waiver wire. Or I'll go with Jelani Woods, who didn't even get selected in this draft. You know, yeah, he, so he, he's at three, six. Oh, is he? Yeah. I must have. Oh, I glossed over him. Yep, yep. That, that's what happens when you you scroll too fast back and forth. <laughs> um, but again, like, why do I take Trey McBride over second round wide receivers when I can go for Jelani Woods, who Moelle Cox can be out of there next year. Colin Granson hasn't done anything. Mm-hmm. They don't have anybody else in that tight end room. Right. Um, and Jelani Woods, we could see could be the one A. Now maybe the Colts go with their their damn frustrating committee and continue to do that. Mm-hmm. But the other side of the coin is maybe Jelani Woods has a clear runway after this season. So, yeah, yep, I'll take the value and I'll just take him a round or two later. Awesome. All right, man. Well, I really appreciate it. We'll get you out of here. Thanks so much for the time drafting. Thanks so much for the time coming back on and talking through these picks. Yeah, man. And we really, really appreciate, appreciate it, man. It. Hey, guys, look, this was a blast. A uh, ton of sharp people. I know not trying to poo-poo on people's picks, you know, just differences in approaches yeah, and drafts. Yeah, right, for sure. But ton of sharp people in this draft room. Really, really thank y'all for having me um, and allowing me to draft against everybody. Um, this was a blast, man. So thank y'all. Yeah, that, that's been the super interesting part when you go from person to person and just seeing the different style and takes and interpretation and how they play. The, the game and the draft. Uh, it's been very interesting so far, so we're excited about this one, and, and thank you again. For your pleasure. That's right. That's what this all was for. It was for your pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the recap. We got a lot of good content. If you guys weren't for your sure pleasure, for your pleasure, for about your pleasure, for your what pleasure, for your pleasure. was going on with these rookies, you just learned everything you needed to know, and, and we gave you our opinion. We gave you 11 different expert analysis opinions, and, and take it for what you, you know, take it for what it's worth. Take Take what your favorite part was, discard the rest, make your own decisions. We're just trying to educate you. And we had a blast talking it up with everybody. And I can't thank everyone that joined us on this podcast enough. Uh, just appreciate all your time and the hard effort that you gave us and just, just joining us. Uh, shout out to Casey for putting it all together. Shout out to my, I like to thank myself for editing all this shit and, and staying true to myself and believing in myself. I'm going to get a little Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I like to thank myself. <laughs> so if you joined us, 
and you made it to the end of this, definitely let me get a, a subscription on the YouTubes. Leave us with a comment. Make sure you like this video. Hit us with that five-star review on the podcast. Go to revelrybrewingco.com. Get a t-shirt. Support your boys. Shout out to Big D. Look at this, man. Look at this. I'm going to go off, on, off, on. Uh, boom, uh, boom, uh, boom, uh, boom, uh. boom, 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 boom. Forever indebted. <laughs> Big D, you the man. I love you, man. Uh, you better get shout outs for the rest of your life. But you're going to be like, God damn, these guys won't keep my name out in their Come mouth. Come to Charleston. You got a room. Yeah. <laughs> First, second, third round's on me. Let's get it popping. Appreciate y'all for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Altoids on me? Peace. <laughs> I got a blank space where my mind should be. Was? What is it? For your pleasure.